Welcome to Zero Style. I am your host, Zero, the cyberspace hero. Here this week with an episode of Zero's Home Arcade, where we will be modifying this, the Nintendo GameCube. So, dust off your old soldering iron and, no, I'm just kidding, you do not need a soldering iron or any soldering skills whatsoever to pull off this mod. We will be using the Flippy Drive. Quick look with the link to the docks. I love Team Off-Broadway's Llama logo, too. This is a solderless mod chip. I've actually already done the mod. I'm recording this intro after the fact, and man, does this thing rule. You can grab this on Crowd Supply. I did just like everybody else. I was not provided with this beforehand. I was in the first round. I've been sitting on this for a while until I was able to find this Nintendo GameCube at the flea market, thrifting my butt off for a great price. It's in good condition. It works perfectly well. This is a DOL01 US region free GameCube. This is a later revision that does not have the serial port in the bottom, but who cares because we don't need it. All the hardware that you're going to need to install comes in the little box with the flippy drive. The only tools that you need are screwdrivers. You're going to need the larger size specialty game bit screwdriver as well as some Phillips. I use a bit driver myself. You're going to need a Phillips 2, a Phillips 0, and a Phillips double zero to pull this mod off. Journey Tool Company, Dirty Dog Brass, and my Carta Turos bit driver for this mod. It's a great little screwdriver. Here's a little 3D printed bracket. It's gonna hold the drive itself. Four teeny tiny little black screws. The flippy drive, you can see where the SD card reader is, as well as the little part for the flex ribbon cable. There's a little USB port on one side. If you've never seen one of these before, they're pretty neat. It's literally a very flexible ribbon cable that has all kinds of traces pre-done. No need to install a million wires and solder all that stuff. The side with the arrow over here goes into the mod chip, and then this section right here is going to be the absolute trickiest part of this whole thing. We're going to make a weird W type shape with this thing, and we're going to nest it between the motherboard's port connector and the port connector attached to the disk drive. What that's going to allow us to do is emulate the contents of the disc directly to the GameCube. It doesn't matter what region it is, this could be a Japanese one that has a broken drive. As long as it powers on the ports, the power buttons and stuff like that, I'll power the motherboard. The drive is what we're going to emulate, so you don't actually need that to work. Here on the teamoffbroadway.com website, go to updates, click this link right here, and I'll take you to their GitHub releases pages. Now you'll notice 142 is the latest and there are newer versions, but those are pre-releases. So click on the one you want and just grab the single file, update F package. Then mount your SD card, make sure you name it Flippy just so you know which it is, and pull that file right under the root of the card. The next time it boots, it'll use that to update the firmware to the newest version. While you're at it, maybe uh, throw a couple ISO files on here. Let's start by removing the four game bit screws from the bottom of the case. They're recessed, they're not going to come out until you flip it over. And when you do, make sure you got the right grip because the top of the case is going to come right off with it. Lift that up and grab your four screws, set them aside. Drop your disc if you're dumb and you left it in there, and take a moment to revel at this beautiful innards of this Nintendo GameCube. Now the back plate kind of just pops right off, lift up and out. So let's take a look at the screws that are going to need to get removed. Five over here where the flippy drive is going to go, four, count them four on the back, and then two that we can see here below the fan assembly. The front panel has these little clips pop right off the front. There's a ribbon cable attached that is insanely difficult to put back on, so just let this hang out of your way, revealing four more tiny screws of a different size. This is the perfect time to dust the interior of your console have this little portable USB powered duster and it is the best thing I've bought in like a year. Grab your Phillips number two bit and get to work. Remove the two screws on either side of the fan on the left half of the GameCube looking from the front. This will allow you to remove the entire fan assembly, revealing three more screws we get to remove. So go ahead and pop those out. Make sure you have a nice little place to keep all of your screws organized so you don't lose them, though they're pretty much all the same size. Now here on the back, we've got four screws to remove. No one, two, or three, but four! Four screws! So go ahead and remove each of those screws from the back side of the case. Zero. 
I said remove them each. Missed one. Okay, well, here on the flippy drive mounting side, we've got five more screws that we need to take out. So go ahead and lefty loosey each one of these screws right out of the side of the GameCube. Grab yourself a Phillips zero bit. Zero! And we are going to go ahead and pull the two screws off either side of these little assemblies. So four screws total. Go ahead and unscrew those. I'm pulling them sideways because my bit is magnetized. The whole little assembly just comes off with the screws right in them. I suggest you just lift them off and set them aside so you don't get confused. Grab that last screw out of the back you forgot. It's time to lift off the drive assembly. Just pull it right up vertical, and it comes right off. Here is the port on the motherboard where we are going to be doing the mod. So now it is time for some origami. We're going to make three folds across this flex ribbon cable on each of these relief points. So start by making sure that the arrow is pointing towards you, and you are going to make an upward fold in the dead center of the cable. You don't got to do it hard because we're going to fold it a couple times. Now go ahead and fold either side against those reliefs, one and then the other. Notice how I'm folding the middle again as I do this, so you don't need to be super hard, especially on the middle. So now we've got a nice little V here in the center of the cable. Now it's hard to see, but if you go over to the edges, there's two more reliefs. We're able to fold the intersection once again to one side. And then when we go ahead and fold on the other, we can fold everything across and match that exactly. And once we're there, just go ahead and give it a nice little squeeze. Not too hard, but you're going to fold it into this W or M shape. So now with our flippy drive origami ready to go, we're going to install it. So start by making sure that you have the arrow pointing outwards against the heatsink. Fold the whole thing into halves and slide it right into the slot. It goes perfectly in there, right against those pins. I did it so perfectly first try that you almost didn't catch it on camera, so I decided that I was going to show you again. Take a look how it looks fully seated. So we're going to take our little W shape, with the arrow pointing outwards, fold the whole thing together in the middle so it sticks into the slot, push it all the way down, Make sure that it makes a nice firm connection with all of those pins. Then we kind of just fold the edges down to the sides a little bit against the heat sink so they're out of the way. And we are golden. We have installed the flex ribbon cable. Yay! The flippy drive also comes with this little port cover here. If you're not going to reinstall your drive, you can just snap this right on top of the cable so it seats nice and tightly in there. But we are going to reinstall the drive because mine works, I'm going to show you how to do that next. Snake the ribbon cable right in between these two plastic pegs here with your arrow pointing outwards. See this little section that's empty on the cover of the metal here? We're going to slide that cable right in there. So align your screw holes right on top while holding it. Push in on the little flex ribbon cable till it pops in there. And then once everything is aligned, push down so it pops into place. Nice and firm. Okay, that is how we put the top piece back on. So let's take our SD card and insert it into the mod chip itself of the flippy drive. One last little peek at this thing because we're not really going to see it again because we're putting it inside a GameCube. So take the end of the flex ribbon cable and insert it into this tiny little slot on the back side of the flippy drive. Take your time here, make sure that it slides in nice and it's all the way in as far as it will go. Once you've got it in place seated correctly, pull down on the center, not the sides, of this little black connector right here. That is it. You have now attached the flex ribbon cable. So let's take our brace. There's a spot for the extra screw that we're actually going to cover up here, which is nice so you don't lose it. Go ahead and install the bracket in there into place, and then grab a screw, seat it, and screw it in. Grab your other screw to the other side and attach it. And you're good to go. Now grab a Phillips double zero bit. Zero! Zero! Because these are like eyeglass size screws to mount this to the bracket. So go ahead, find your mounting holes, 
line up everything on the board and attach it with a tiny little black screw. Just go ahead and righty tighty that bad boy right into place. This is the cleanest mod ever. It's time to reinstall everything and I am going to stop talking for a minute and I'm going to leave you with some Where's Loader by the legend, YT Cracker. Buried on my hard drive are ISOs and ISOs, they call me the Where's Meister wherever I go. Up you a torrent and I'll surf it off my daddy and I'll trade you some porn if you're upstream and steady. My IRC bot serve movies and games, razor cracks cut deep straight through your veins. My DVD rip, just ask me, you got that new Star Wars? Yeah, it's nasty. I am the Where's Loader, you free hook up on whatever you need, right to your high speed. DCC me, leech me, hit me on my aim, you know how to reach me. Get your ratios up, or I ban you off my tracker. If you ain't sharing, you're probably a hacker. My switch lights up like a Christmas tree. When I'm online, surfing P to P. Drop me a line when you see my handle. Up in the names list in your channel. On second thought, don't, cause it's probably a poser. The godfather ghost, call me Kaiser Souza. I am the Where's Loader, you free hook up on whatever you need, right to your high speed, DCC me, leech me, hit me on my aim, you know how to reach me. I get all the good stuff before it hits the stores, I sweat zero day right out my pores. Every episode of every show Screen is a movies from Tokyo Why pay for things if you get them free? Even I serve my album on IRC yeah. I am the Where's Loader You free hook up on whatever you need Right to your high speed DCC me, leech me Hit me on my aim, you know how to reach me So here we are, booting the flippy drive for the very first time. It goes ahead with the regular GameCube boot, and then all of a sudden, things kind of glitch out to the menu, and we are dropped right into Q-Boot, the specialty firmware designed for the flippy drive for us to load all of our homebrew software and backups, of course. So I've turned on the lights here so you can see the TV that I'm using, this old piece of junk, as well as the GameCube we just modded. I just want you to know that this is not a capture card kind of thing, so it looks a little rough because this is my Canon EOS R just pointed at a TV. As much as I love Metroid Prime, I'm not going to play through it with no screen save and make you watch the intro. So let's go ahead and boot back again. They used the real assets from decompiled GameCube menus to make this. That's why it looks so perfect. All right, let's do a quick little Smash Brothers Melee. And this is uncut here. I want you to see the actual load times with my SanDisk SD card. It's not a super high speed one, but the link in the description to the exact card if you're interested in how long these boots take. And the GameCube logo comes up as well every time these load, but the ISO is just being streamed directly to the motherboard off the mod chip, so it just thinks there's a regular disc in there. Of course I'm going to pick Samus. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you with this either. Let's go ahead and do a little GBI, Game Boy Interface. I am a huge Game Boy Advance fan, so quickly I'm going to show you the regular GBI doll file. If you press the right trigger, you can adjust the size, and after a couple seconds, all the text disappears. Load a save file directly off the Game Boy Advance cartridge. Here we 
we are playing Metroid Zero Mission. Now, playing this with a GameCube controller does take a little bit of getting used to. Like, here I am accidentally trying to save it then. But, yeah, it, it's pretty great, I have to admit. And controller options are definitely plentiful for the GameCube, so if you don't like the controller and want to have something else for Game Boy Advance, you absolutely can. Alright, so let's switch it up again. Let's take a quick look at the Q-Boot menus. There's definitely some demo scene inspired art going on here with each one of these. I like the little clock. Not many options yet in this version. This is the newest version as of recording, the newest stable version, I should say. And I don't have a memory card in right now to do memory card management, or I would show you that, my bad. All right, let's go with classic Game Boy. We've got the Japanese version of Mario 2. Now, for whatever reason, the Game Boy stuff doesn't have as many options, but I also haven't super explored GBI yet. I have a lot to learn, a lot to figure out with this still. This is just the default color palette and options and everything that just come out of the box with GBI installed, so definitely a lot more to work on here, but it runs fantastic, and I know this probably does not look super representative of how pixelated these lines look because it's my camera against the TV, but wow does it look good. This is definitely the Game Boy on TV experience that I've always wanted. Super Game Boy is great and everything, but you, just, you can't play Game Boy Advance games on Super Game Boy. So this is a solution that handles both those situations with this mod. Alright, let's pop out of Game Boy as well. And all of the GameCube tricks still work. Alright, let's end this with just a little bit of F-Zero. I want to show you some more fast-paced kind of action. See how fast the screen rendering is. And, just, and to show you that this just runs exactly like as if there was a disc in this GameCube. Now let me just say, I am terrible at racing games, and I'm not going to do well with this. That's it. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. We installed the bug. We did it. We did it. Oh man, I've been watching way too much kids TV. Anyhow, we succeeded in installing the flippy drive. It works amazing. Shout out to you guys at Team Off Broadway. This thing was so simple to install, so clean in the way that it came out in the end. The UI and the graphics around Qboot are so great. My limited testing, it seems like an amazing alternative to Swiss. Everything about this project has been awesome. You guys did a phenomenal job on the flippy drive. There are tons of apps for the Nintendo GameCube. One of the most powerful ones allows you to put a disc in there and copy it to an image file for archival purposes. So I'm going to be taking all of my GameCube games, making my own legitimate archival images of them, totally within my legal rights to play as archival backups. I certainly will not be doing any kind of piracy or anything like that, absolutely not. We are going to be on the level doing this 100% to the letter of the law. Anyhow, that's the video for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like. It's the free social currency here on YouTube. Click these boxes appearing on my face as I do this outro if you want to watch more of my videos right now. And if no one has told you today, you are a rad person who deserves love and praise just like everybody else in this world. Get out there today and modify something that you own and make it work the way you want it to. Have yourselves a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Later on.